This is Constantine Quilt's new Aussie made upgraded clamshells ruler. We have now got beautiful etched guidelines on this ruler to help place it on your quilt top or on a grid or on a seam line to guide you to stitch the half circles where you want them to go. Now this is the two inch and four inch ruler, which means that you have half circles that are two inches in diameter, and there's four of those in a row, and two four inch in diameter half circles. Having multiple uh, curves on, one, on each side just simply means you can be much more efficient and keep things nice and straight when you are using these on a grid. You can also do this using a circle template, but it means that you are pausing and moving every single time you want to do a half a circle. This particular example I'm going to show you today is using um, the clamshell to create a background fill um, in this block. Now I've just sat this tracing paper over my uh, cutting board so I've got the grid underneath it. But if this was on your quilt, you would chalk in a grid or you would use your piecing lines to be able to guide you for your equal divisions. But in this case, I'm going to use just a two inch grid in a, uh, a two inch clamshell and I'm going to place this over my grid I tend to start at the top. Now there are a straight line along here, but it also matches up to the flat edges of that ruler. And so that I'm looking down on top, I'm going to stand to do this to line everything up. So the center line through each half circle, you can match to the lines on, the, uh, on your grid. And I'm using the drawing wheel just to mimic this and the Bowen mechanical pencil today, just so that I can quickly go along here. See how we can do so many at the same time. Once I get to that point, I need to move my ruler and line up using the etch lines so that it all matches up. And then we can continue to the end of the block, which finishes up the top. I would then move my ruler down and we're off setting it so that we can create that clamshell design. I would stitch in the ditch down to the next start point. Remembering I have got my scored etch line along the grid line because the needle is offset by a quarter of an inch. And then we can simply go along here all without breaking our threads. Move your ruler just that once. Line up all my guidelines. And we'd end up up the top again. And we're going to continue this by realigning our template. Stitch in the ditch all the way down to here. Move a ruler along and line up using our etched guidelines. Pause with your needle down and move your ruler into position. Stitch the ditch down to here, come along. Now, I have got a circle marked on here as if it was a, an applique. So I'm only going to stitch to the edge of that applique and then I'm going to stitch on, on the ditch of the applique before I hit the ruler again and I'll do the same to that side and I would stitch in the ditch till I got to that point and then coming over here. Move my ruler because this is a background fill.
and we'll move it down again line up all my guidelines stitch in the ditch down the edge of the block and then continue until I hit the edge of the applique. Now this time I know I'm not going to go across to here and I could then continue going down this side back and forth just by lining up my ruler with the grid. Remember I've stopped right where that is. And happens to be just perfect in this case to then keep going back to fill in the background over here. Move it down. Stitch in the ditch down the edge of the block. And keep going until we hit the edge of the applique. And I could then choose to simply move down here. But this time round, I think I would actually stop and cut my threads or I could keep going that way. But no, I'll cut my threads and I'm going to go back and start again over this side. Just think about it to see which is going to be the least stops and starts. If I do this, I can simply move my template over. Line it up where it needs to be and continue stitching all the way to the end. And I can either come down and finish that row, stop to tie off threads and finish that little area there, or I could move up and finish that area and come back and do the other one. Really doesn't matter. So at this point, I'm not going to cut my threads. I'm going to Line everything up to continue going back. I've moved my tracing paper. Doesn't need to be there. Okay, so then I would tie off my threads and I would come back to finish over on this side. So lining up using my guidelines and the grid. Start again, go here until I hit the applique. Move my ruler down and again line up to the grid and the guidelines I would stitch in the ditch down to the edge of the applique and then come back to fill in this section and the last one is this here until I get to the applique and up to you whether you want to do just the tiny section in the middle here where you would stitch in the ditch and it would be that one there and that one there. It's only a tiny little V to fill in that last section there. And there you are. using the clamshell, that's the two inch clamshells and uh, be prepared, there is a one and three inch one coming along soon. And that is a wonderful background fill, 
which you can then further enhance if you wanted to by filling in alternate clamshells or putting a design inside some of those clamshells um, as you go along or afterwards. So just think about how what you might want to do there. You could simply go along and let's say as an example, just do a straight fill. Probably do it neater than what I'm doing now. I would probably tend to use a straight edge on this one to uh, get that perfectly even if you wanted to do that. Or more freehand, just stipple. So there you go. That is the first design using the two and four inch clamshell. And I've just used the two inch ones to create a background design. This next design is a very, very uh, common one that is used in sash sashings and it's called the egg and dart traditionally. And it's just simply half a circle that you will place in equal divisions. And when you flip it, it becomes a mirrored image and it creates a secondary design. So I've got a 12 inch by three inch rectangle here and they've been marked in equal divisions of two inches. So I'm choosing the four inch clamshell and I'm going to line up my center lines and my seam line and simply going to stitch my half circles. I will need to move it over one more time to actually get the final repeat, lining it all up. Then I would stitch in the ditch up to that end and I would flip my ruler over and I am stitching from the opposite side now. So the ruler is behind my hopping foot. I need to line that up. And you do need to practice this to be able to keep things nice and steady. And use those guidelines to be able to create, create that design. And then I would stitch in the ditch down that side, that edge there, and you create the simple egg and dart. Now, just if I turn, take that one away, and now you can see the simple sashing design um, that I use all the time. To make that even more interesting on a quilt is then I would potentially fill in the negative spaces to make it really pop. Whether that bill would be with a fill or if it's large enough, you can actually put um, feather designs in there as well. So that gives you another effect. Uh, simple fill for this one is, I can do the figure eight. Freehand fill. And on this way, I would go, I'll turn it the opposite way. Stretch it to fill. And then you, on this side, what you're looking for is you actually going to be doing loops. to finish it off. And the same with this one. Which gives you a lovely effect in a sashing. Next, if you have a wide sashing, you could almost utilize it both clamshell sizes. So how about we use this one here where it's four inches wide and 
this time I'm going to line up this one and do little two two inch clamshells along the edge Then I can flip the ruler over, line back up, and come back and do the four inch. Then you could Head up to the other side in the ditch and bring your ruler back over, lining up all your guidelines. Making sure you have control of that ruler. Keep your fingers close to the needle, but don't stitch your fingers. Otherwise you'll be joining that wonderful club of putting a needle through the finger from your quilting machine. Oops, I didn't get that one too straight. There we go, there's that one. We'll finish over here, flip the ruler, and now line up, hold it firm, and not slip like I just did then. And we will complete the design. As such, Just turn that over so you can see. Almost looks like umbrellas. And you could put something in in the middle I would almost uh, you know stipple all this and then the rest of it pops and you get these shapes in all of your sashings next I'm going to show you an overlapping design that you could potentially use in a border so just assuming this blue line here is the seam line of my border and I have created um, a grid on here so that I've got something to line this up to and I'm simply going to use my four inch clamshell to create a quick overlapping design so simply going along to create my half circles and again you could use a circle ruler for this one as well this just saves that little bit of time in lining things up because you have a double clamshell on one ruler. Okay, that's as much as I've got to stitch on. Now I'm just going to offset it on the opposite side so that we can go back and we're going to overlap. which gives a really, really, there's the edge of my paper. There it is. Lovely design. And I'll put some paper underneath so that you can see. It's quick, it's simple. And then you get this overlapping design. You see that? You could add to it and your little um, two inch ones will fit in between if you so choose, or you can simply use these curves and do a little bit of curve cross hatching there. If you have uh, 
wanted to follow that along and move out and fill that in which is not hard to do if you use the all-in-one ruler this one and you could potentially use how can I get this out of the way come in here I would give it a bit of a a breathing space and do that one there that one there should have been using this so now I'm simply going to go across here and down move it down again Oops, I didn't have the pencil inside the hole properly. And then you can come the other direction. And this time the edge of the drawing wheel or the edge of your hopping foot is your guideline if you want to come back this way. And there you have a curve cross hatching inside each of these. You can do all sorts of things. You could use this ruler again to do straight lines along the edge um, and have them a quarter of an inch apart. Keeping your crosshair on the starter ruler along the seam line to keep it lined up and using your quarter inch lines to stitch down and back and I would do a double row of stitching because this will be the most accurate than trying to stitch in the ditch along any of the curves use a nice fine thread and it will not be obvious minimal thread build up Checking your crosshair on here to keep yourself perfectly 90 degrees. Very easy to get yourself out of whack if you don't check to keep yourself parallel. Sometimes the quilt top itself isn't straight. So then you'll use your best judgment to make sure that it looks straight, even if it mathematically it is not. Okay. That will come up as a beautiful border design if you went and filled all of these in. And that was just purely using a straight edge ruler and a clamshell. All made here in Australia and they come in both high shank and low shank sizes so that you can use them with both your long arm machine or with a high shank ruler foot on a domestic machine or the three, three millimeter thick ones which are more suited to the low shank um, ruler feet on domestic sewing machines.